Hello, everybody. So I wanted to do a quick update with what's happening in my town. Thanks to everyone who reached out and inquired about my safety. As some of you may or may not know, we've had some really life-changing, shattering fires in the area, and even the fire chief and half of the fire staff lost their own homes in, in the blaze. It's been challenging and frightening and horrifying, but I think this is probably our new normal in lieu of what's happening to our planet. So I just wanted to fill you all in and let you know that I'm fine, my family's fine, our house is fine, thankfully, and we really hope that this is the end of these critical fires for at least this year. Maybe next year would be nice. Um, I did want to have a little chat today about um, Photoshop beta and the generative fill options that are available in that release. And I wanted to show you a before and after of a couple of bridal portraits that I've done recently for a good friend of mine. And I, I have to say that it's sort of incredible. Um, it's still quite a bit of work. I don't think that there's any one click answer for it. Um, I still think that you have to utilize your skill set and perfect whatever results you get using Fit Photoshop Beta. On another note, before we get in, I did want to just mention that IPC is nearing the expiry date for entering into the PPA for international print competition and it's an entirely different experience this year so i'm looking forward to seeing how it goes this is my first year competing back now after several years away and i have to say that with covid and everything else i just really missed competing so i am happily back on the bandwagon now i was going to go for my art degree but i don't even know if there is an art category anymore but we'll see as well, if you are Canadian, remember that the deadline to enter the World Photographic Cup has now been extended until September 7th, so make sure you go to a link in the description below if you are interested in competing with the rest of Team Canada for this very rewarding competition. Okay, let's get into the video now. I'm not going to do an entire edit, but I'm going to walk you through the basic steps on how I achieved the background for these wedding portraits. I know I said bridal, but they're wedding portraits. This was their wedding day. Okay, so this is straight out of the camera. This is the look that I was going for. So after I adjusted one of the images, I just went ahead and saved a preset, which in the last video, I showed you how to do that. So if you want to know how, just click right up here somewhere and you'll be able to watch that. So I'm just going to come in here and apply that setting from right there. That's the one I want. And now I'm going to just open both of those as objects. And if I'm looking back and forth, it's because my tablet that I work on is right here. Camera with my iMac is right here. Okay, so these are opened in Photoshop beta because obviously regular Photoshop doesn't have generative fill or any of the other fun stuff that is only currently available in Photoshop beta. But really quickly, let's just jump over to Photoshop and I'll show you. So I, once again, this is straight out of the camera. You can see it's way too oversaturated and those greeny yellows are, ugh, hate them. And what I did was I created these images basically using generative fill. Now, obviously there's a lot more editing that went into these. Like I said, it still requires work. It's not a one click wonder. I mean, you could do that, but it wouldn't look very good. So let's jump back over to beta and I'll show you how I accomplished some of this. Okay, here we are in beta. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is just flatten my layer like so. And the beauty of working with generative fill is that you can just keep using your lasso tool and adding more and more masks if you want to. And so obviously, um, because I did shoot this on a 135 millimeter wide open, I don't really care about the quality of the chunks that I create. I'm going to apply other PNG files over top of 
the fill so that I get a more natural look. An image with this entire edit will be available in my school next month and you should be able to access those somewhere around the end of September. All of the new courses are going to be added at the end of the, fall, the next month. And that's just so that the content remains fresh and we can continuously turn it over. We will delete older courses too that are no longer relevant to the current versions of Photoshop and, and uh, Adobe Camera Raw, just so that you know. Okay, let's get into it. So I'm going to grab my lasso tool and I'm just going to select this. This is my softbox and this was shot using my Reflex S from Stella Pro Lights. And you have to get it in fairly close to get that light on them. But nowadays with generative fill, we don't really care, do we? So what I do is I click generative fill and in this, I just put a period because if you do that, you get less instances of the machine telling you that you have broken the terms and conditions. So it seems to work. So uh, let's look at this. So as you can see, it does an amazing job. And if you look down here, you can see you have other options, right? So this is number two. This is number three. So it's be definitely between three and one. Now I've had a little strange thing happen. I'm really not sure why. Maybe some of you can let me know if you've experienced it. If you click on like if you go back and forth to a variety of the options, it looks like one disappears and then you're left with two. So I, I'm very careful now, especially if I liked number one. I really like number three, but I'm going to click on number one again. And I think I'm going to stick with number one. And I think it's great, you know, like for all intents and purposes, it's way better than a big white softbox. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is with my lasso tool, I'm going to start trying to just get rid of some of these distractions like this. And I just sit here and I just circle pieces of the image that I want to change and I want to get better. And I find that it does really a truly quite amazing job. Now, as you probably noticed in the previous edited version of this, I didn't like these flower stems here, so I'll show you how I actually made the bridal bouquet look a little bit better. Okay, let's take a look at what we got. That's our first one. I mean, that's not good either. That's not really what I'm going for. But if I click back on this one, here's what you can do. You can just go right over top, even though you already have that mask selected. And you could do something like that. If you want to add in more of the foliage, that will actually encourage your selection to be more foliage like, right? So click generative fill, put your period in, hit enter. And you can see that I've selected a portion of her arm too. And just remember that even though you may select a portion that you don't want to, you can always mask it off if it gives you something you don't really want. So that's okay. Let's look at the next one. That's a bit better. And let's look at this one. I mean, that's fine. But what I'm trying to do is get rid of this black block. And I'll be honest with you, in the previous time that I edited this picture, I ended up just masking painting and masking. That was the best that I could do. So let's take a look over here. We definitely want to get rid of this. Hit enter and see what we get. But yeah, there's a, a big portion of this that I had to do over painting with. And that's what I mean by it's not perfect, but it's really it's really great for helping you get there. Now, if I look at the variations down here, I can see that none of them actually got rid of that gray square. I think this one perhaps is a bit better, but we can actually try to get rid of it again. And selecting just a little bit more of that foliage might do the trick. There you go. So now we've got rid of that little gray box, but let's see if we have anything better 
That's pretty good. I'm not even going to click on the third one because I can see that they actually made that gray box three times. So I, I know I don't want that one. But I think that one is good. Yeah, I like the second one better because they did some big thingy thing there. Um, but don't be afraid to try this now. So let's just come in and select all of this. And let's see what we get with that. So it's really, you know, repetitive and you have to do it over and over again. But I advise you to because it actually ends up working quite well. See, that's not bad. It's not great, but let's see what else we got. Oh, that's so much better. And this one, that's uh, a little thick in the foliage. I think I'm going to stick with this one. And then I'm going to just select this again and see if we can't fill that in. The world of Photoshop is so different from when I started. Like, oh my gosh, can you imagine the speed at which people are going to learn now? So let's take a look. Like, oh my gosh, guys, that's phenomenal. Let's look at the second one and the third one. Definitely sticking with the first one. And now we're getting there. We're getting somewhere, right? But now I want to come down here and I'm going to pick her arm, hand, and a piece of this bouquet and come in like this. Now that's a fairly significantly large piece. Let's see what it's going to do. Really? Do you see how good that is? It's pretty freaking good, isn't it? Let's take a look and see what else we got. Don't like that one. And I don't know what it did to her bouquet. So the first one is definitely better. However, I definitely don't like those big branches that they stuck out of the bouquet. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come in and we're going to just get rid of it like so. It's like you're essentially creating almost a whole different image, really, isn't it? Okay, that looks better. Let's check the others. Oh, see, that's good. As is that one, but I think this one is better. Now let's just take a gander in here really quick. So I'm seeing this and I'm seeing this. So what you can do is go to your layers and a tip for finding the layer you want is to Make sure you're on your grab tool. Clicking control, you can click like this and it'll tell you which one that is, right? So now we can see that. So we can see that it didn't actually mask that out. You have a couple of options. Um, I would put a layer above it, grab my lasso tool, and I would just come in like so and select this. And then I would just grab a soft white brush and reduce my flow down and I would just paint that in. It's, it's easier than trying to get your machine to do it. And, you know, obviously you can come in and really refine your edge if you want to, but that this is just how I do it, right? So just come in like that and just refine that edge. So something like that. And that's what I mean by it still requires work. Do the same thing for this piece over here and you're pretty much good to go. All right. So you can see around her hair too. And I had that issue in my edited one. So I had to really mask around, paint around and work it back. So work, but it's worth it. Okay. Grab your lasso tool. Now we're going to focus over here. And the one thing I did notice that this one did was it seemed to really want to take away his jacket and pants. So you might have to mask that back in. So hit enter. Okay. So that's number one. That's number two. Interesting. Number three. Yeah, I would probably stick with number three, but then definitely come over this white portion here and just do it again. Okay, that's a bit better. And I can look on the other two right now and see that it's worse. So I'm not even going to bother. 
okay? So that is how I do generative fill. And then of course I fill in the rest and do all the other stuff, the retouching, and we end up with the final product. Again, if you want to learn how to edit this entirely, make sure you check out my platform. Link is down below in the description and join the editing course tab. All right, so just a quick look at my final edits again. You can see I had to really work around the edge here and around the edge here, but my bouquet turned out beautiful. I added PNG Ivy cutout images. I use those in a lot of my photography now. I just find them to be so easy to use, so quick, and you can adjust the colors and the contrast and the lighting super easy, and they just really complete my images. Additionally, next month, due to a hugely popular demand, I am starting a mid-journey course on my platform, and it's going to start all the way from the beginning, and then it's going to slowly work its way up with various lessons being added on every single month until you're going to be able to create these kind of images. I'll just give you some examples here. This is my granddaughter, and she's now three. Three is always the starting age for my fairy portraits, which is one of my largest sellers in my studio for those interested in theme portraits. And so the background was mid journey generated and the flowers and all of the foliage in the forefront were actually PNG files that I added in later. So this is definitely with the help of using AI to create portraits. This one here is probably one of my my more well-known attempts at um, combining my photography with mid-journey this is i think this is back when it was mid-journey version three or four and i can tell you right now that the latest version of mid-journey does not create these more artistic looking florals so i am going to go back and teach those various methods using prior versions because you can't get the same kind of replicated florals that I could back then. This is one. Here's another that was really well received. Here is another, again, just using Mid Journey. And this one here, believe it or not, this background image was rendered in Mid Journey. And I believe this was version four as well but it's very photographic and it really lent itself well to a, a less um, painted look, painterly look, more photographic look, but I, I feel like it just worked really, really well. So if you're interested in learning these techniques, how to create exceptional looking images using AI plus real photography, then make sure you check out the link below and join my platform. And I think that's it for now. So until the next video, I will see you guys later.